but anyways, so I remember uh, um, finding you on YouTube, and then we we got to meet at uh, Phoenix Comic Con, and your booth, man, you, you've got you've got the most amazing setup. Um, you're not doing so much uh, tabling anymore, right? No, not really, not really. I've I've kind of I. I... I, I noticed I started getting into doing other stuff like creating digital products and things. And I realized that the amount of effort and everything that went into, went into the, at least the way I was doing it, tabling and cons and things like that. Cause I would, you know, like you said, I kind of have a little, I kind of went overboard a little bit with my production and my, my setup and everything. So, I mean, I would, you know, the week or whatever, before even the convention, I would set everything up in my living room, make sure everything works. And, uh, and, and, and then I started to think, you know, all this time I'm putting into it. I mean, I would do okay. At, I would do, I would do okay at cons, but then I just remember, then I just realized the amount of effort I was putting into it. And then, you know, and it just, and I also was getting diminishing returns because every single year it would just kind of, I mean, it would just get, the, the conventions kind of changed and became, le I mean, less people interested in comics. More, It was more cosplayers, which are, you know, they're fun to look at and everything, that, you know, and the stuff that, and I'm a big fan of making costumes and Halloween and stuff, but little secret cosplayers, they don't buy stuff for the most part. They're there, they're there to get their pictures taken with people and stuff like that. So, you know, there's that. And then everything's kind of more geared towards celebrity appearances. And it just, I just noticed that it's, you know, the, I, like I said, getting diminishing returns. And I, I'm like, if this keeps up, it's just not going to. So I, I made the, not, at the, I didn't know at the time, but I made probably the best decision I can. Cause at the end of every convention, you kind of re up for the next one. And so you like take, take a, a decent chunk of what you made at that convention and put it back in for next year. And then I'm like, and, and I just decided, you know what? I don't think I'm going to this year. I don't think I'm going to do, I'm going to not going to do next year. And it turned out next year was 2020. So that was <laughs> so actually kinda... the same time as me. I did the same decision as yeah. you. That is funny. Yeah. That is yeah. Funny. And I, the, and I've done, you know, I, I have done a convention since then, but, but it was one where I was sort of invited to just to, just to sign at a table for my local comic store. So I didn't bring my whole setup and I didn't have to, pay the booth fee and, have, and that basically i was just kind of hanging out kind of helping them out and stuff and i guess if i ever return maybe i'd scale it down and i think part of the problem was i have so many different SKUs or products or whatever um because i'm i was just doing a lot of different things and it's it's hard for when you get sensory overload when you go to these cons and it's oh, yeah. like if it's like, oh, well, they'll look at my booth like, well, I don't know what this is. This, this isn't, this isn't Batman. This isn't Spider-Man. I don't know what this is. And it's a lot, a lot of different things that I don't know. And I'm not interested in finding out because I only want, I only like the things that I'm already, that I already know that I've seen on TV or whatever. So, cause I don't, I don't really, I never really did fan art or anything like that. So, I mean, I had, you know, I had certain core people that are interested in looking for something new, but most people that go to cons, they're not looking for something new. They're looking for things they already know. So, that's so yeah, and yeah, you're right. Right. So, so that was kind of, that was, so if I go back, I probably, I might just, you know, I might just try to see what would happen if I just focus just on like my comic just to see this is an experiment you know maybe if i just go there with the one thing to see because the like the comics wouldn't sell that much because there's so much other stuff you know people would be looking at my prints or my i had little lab experiments and all kinds of stuff like that it was basically a mad science supply store so i had all this stuff that kind of went along with that theme um and maybe comic cons aren't the best place for that. I think if I was would have started doing like science trade shows and things where I would be the only one doing anything like that, I think I would have cleaned up. So um, yeah, it's but but I never got to that point because you know 2020 and everything. And now if I ever go back, I might just see what would happen if I just went there with my comics. And maybe I've got I also have a series of comic workbooks that have like that they're little you know, workbooks that I sell on Amazon or whatever. And they're, you know, they will be like lettering guides, like almost like a line notebook, but it's sized for comic book lettering or, or I've got like pan different panel layouts that you can use. So I've got a whole series of different uh, printed books that you can like work, 
you can use to practice making comics and things like that. So if I ever go back, I might just do something with just, just my comic and the comic workbooks and see what happens. But, but I'm not, I, I don't know. I'm not really in a hurry to do that. So. That's what I'm noticing for my, my own self.